In this world, you will have trouble. Well, isn't that the truth? Tell me something new, I think I can hear you say. In this world, you will have trouble. John, when he writes his gospel, records these words of Jesus Christ. In this world, you will have trouble, says Jesus. But take heart. I have overcome the world. I've always liked this little phrase of Jesus. Jesus, the overcomer, I have overcome the world, he says. Some other translations say, be of good cheer or take courage because I have overcome the world. What's remarkable about these words is that Jesus said them before he even got to the cross where he faced trouble and overcame the world through the power of his death and glorious resurrection. Jesus, the overcomer. I wonder if some of you remember singing a song within the Salvation Army by the author Catherine Baird, a hymn entitled Eternal God. Now it's a big sing, and when it reaches its final verse, it really builds up into a crescendo. And it says these words. Our great Redeemer liveth still. His love sustains us in thy will. Because he conquered, we shall win. His cross before, his joy within, our cheerful banners are unfurled. For Christ has overcome the world. And when it reaches that final line, it's repeated in triumphant tones. Christ has overcome the world and it makes you want to throw your hands up in the air and say, Yes, Christ has overcome the world. But if you look at the words in that verse again, you'll notice something interesting that the author puts in. Because he conquered, we shall win. John echoes this sentiment in his letter in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And he says this, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Everyone born of God. Everyone born of God overcomes. Jesus who is the overcomer, invites us into a fellowship with him that by faith we may be victorious. We may share in the victory of Jesus Christ. This is the victory that has overcome the world. John highlights the way in which believers are to live out this victorious life by following the commands of God. And interestingly, he says, these commands are not burdensome. In fact, that seems to echo again what Jesus was saying. You can read in Matthew chapter 11 where he says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. <laughs> well, how can this be? You might be saying. Trying to keep all of the commandments of God, how is that easy? How is that not burdensome? But that's asking the wrong question. You're approaching it in the wrong way. Remember what Jesus said about the greatest commandment. He said it's love. A love for God that then overflows in a love for others. When you love, there are things that you will do that don't seem to be a burden, but a simple act of love. Some of you will know this full well. In your caring, in your commitment, in your responsibility to others, you do things that others may think a burden, but not to you because it's love. Have you ever wondered why so many people in the world can just simply dismiss the commands of God? It's because, John says, that the love of the Father is not in them. But the love of the Father is in you. And so, by grace and faith, we are victorious and we overcome the unlovely ways of the world. Now, does that mean that we never find ourselves in the position where we break any of the commandments? <laughs> I think you know the answer to that. But John says that we shouldn't give up just because of that fact. No, we should pray. In fact, we shouldn't just pray for ourselves to deal with matters of sin, but we should pray for others. And he encourages believers to be in prayer for one another, that they would not fall into sin but they would be victorious by grace and faith. And so if there is sin, pray it out. 
pray it out, says John. As we draw this short study of the first letter of John to a conclusion, I want to go back to the beginning again and just remind ourselves of those beautiful words at the start of this book. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. John seems to be setting out a testimony for this whole book. He says, here's what I've seen, here's what I've heard, here's what I know, here's what I want to share with you. His testimony. And then interestingly, the book concludes with another testimony. Only this time it's not John's testimony. It's the testimony of God. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. God is proclaiming, he is testifying to the works that he has done through Jesus Christ. And he has brought about life, eternal life. And by that I mean the fullness of knowing Jesus Christ now and into all of eternity. If you go back and read all the way through 1 John, It'll take about 15 minutes. You will see this aspect of eternal life coming up again and again. The different characteristics in it, the different qualities that we can receive right here, right now. It's about walking in the light of the Lord. It's about receiving from God the fullness of his love, his grace, his mercy and forgiveness that brings freedom. It's a means by which we can love others in Jesus' name. It's the power to overcome evil and sin and not be led astray. And it's the hope by which we may not fear. And it's the blessing of the anointing that comes from the Holy One. Well, I wouldn't want today to go by without offering to you an opportunity to receive that eternal life. And I want to suggest to you that today could be the day of your salvation. Today is the day where your eternal life begins right here and right now. So I want us to take a moment of prayer. And for some, you may want to make a new commitment to Jesus Christ as the one who brings light and life and love. So we're going to pray. And we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and to speak to us and to minister to us and to draw us nearer to the Father heart of God. Perhaps you'd like to pray this prayer with me. Lord, I thank you for your great love for me. I thank you that you have demonstrated that love by sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the example of perfect love. I know there are times when I do not live up to that love. I stumble and fall. I fail and sin. In your great mercy, restore me in righteousness, that I may eternally be a child of God. Amen. Amen. May that be so for you, child of God. God bless you.